everybody. Welcome to our live webcast uh, for Powell Flutes. My name is Kristen Moore. I'm going to give it a few seconds so people can start tuning in, get settled, grab a cup of midday or morning coffee. Hopefully everybody's having a great day today. Hi, Declan. How's it going? <laughs> Hi, Julia. Thanks for joining everybody. Hopefully you're enjoying some of the same sunshine that we have here in Boston today. I'll give it a few more minutes so some more friends can join and get comfortable, get cozy. Hi, Lori. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> hey, Kurt. How's it going? Nice to see everybody. Hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully we don't have any cat interruptions today. I did just get a new one-year-old kitten, so my apologies in advance if she uh, decides to make a cameo. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. How's it going? Hey, Ben. Uh, San Diego. I missed, it was uh, disappointing not to be able to travel this year and get out to see all of our flute friends at flute festivals across the country. San Diego, Portland, uh, where else? Houston, Minneapolis. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Hi, Al. Right. So as we uh, just give it another minute so that people can get settled in, maybe grab a beverage, cup of coffee, tea. Um, we are going to be fielding comments from the or questions from the comments section. So please don't hesitate um, to reach out and ask whatever kind of palisonary questions you might have. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. I know my Buffet Crimpon colleagues are also ready and willing uh, to type up their answers and jump on in. So uh, please feel free to take advantage of this opportunity. So burning questions answered. It's a good time for that. All right. Well, we can at least start. I'll uh, do a nice slow introduction before we dive into anything good. I'm sure we'll get a few more people joining in. Um, but it is so nice to be here for you today uh, with this Powell Flutes live stream as part of our Buffet Crimpon USA Rhapsody live series. My name is Kristen Moore. I'm the North American Direct Sales Specialist here at Powell Flutes. And as you can see, um, I'm streaming live from my home in Medford, Massachusetts, which is just outside Boston and about 20 miles or so from our Powell workshop in Maynard, Massachusetts. Um, so first and foremost, most importantly from everyone here at Powell Flutes and Buffet Crampon, we hope that you're staying healthy during this challenging time, staying sane, finding ways to keep busy, um, Today's webcast is part of a series that was started about a month ago. Through these live streamed product discussions and artist interviews across our Buffet Crampon group, we hope to provide um, an interesting forum to break up your day a little bit. And in fact, every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m., there will be a new live stream uh, for example, this Thursday, we'll be doing a deep dive into Besson euphoniums with my Buffet Crampon colleague and low brass specialist, Declan Lynch. Hello, Declan. And he'll be joined by Besson artist, Stephen Mead. Uh, all episodes will be available to watch after the conclusion. So don't worry if you have to attend to work responsibilities or kiddos or new cats. <laughs> there will be plenty of time for you to watch after the fact as well. And uh, just looking ahead after that, then I do want to let you know all of our flute fans out there on Tuesday, May 26 at 2 p.m. We'll have another Powell Flutes discussion, this time with our wonderful artist, 
and Associate Professor of Flute at the University of Colorado, Colorado Boulder, Christina Jennings. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Hope you can join us. Um, we're going to discuss you know, kind of the fun stories she has with finding her Powell flutes you know, uh, what she's doing to keep busy during this quarantine and taking solace and practicing and connecting. So, uh, again, for those of us who just joined, welcome. Uh, good afternoon if you're here on the East Coast of the US. Good morning, good evening for our international viewers. Today's session is devoted to our lineup of Powell Sonari flutes. We'll explore the different models and their features, their versatility, and really, you know, how uh, to, to find the right one for you, which one to fit your different playing needs or your students' playing needs as well. Uh, so from our 501 all the way up to our 905, which we just unveiled last year in 2019, howls are really a perfect pre-professional instrument, whether it's a very first step up, um, a flute that will help a musician succeed through high school, college, beyond, um, or to those, you know, who may be discovering or rediscovering the, the power of their musical voice during any extra time spent at home right now. I know some of us are taking up new hobbies, maybe knitting or musical, um, piano, flute, it's the perfect time to do it. So if, again, at any point you have a question for me, please feel free to ask via the comment section. Um, if after the fact, you can always reach out via email. Um, you can message me on Facebook here through the Powell Flutes Facebook page. We would love to hear from you. Um, so thank you, Edward. I see we do have a question about 905 and 705 getting both C-sharp trill and splitty. I'll touch on that if you can hang with us for a little bit. I'll touch on that as we get closer to those instrument models. But that's definitely a really good point and something we get asked about. So thanks for uh, your input. And hello, Chris. Hi, Francois. Thank you so much, everybody. Who is tuned in? Hi, Miguel from Mexico City. Yay. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to start with um, a little bit of history, actually. So Sonari flutes were first introduced to our market in 2002 in celebration of Whole Flutes' 75th anniversary. So yes, you heard right, our 75th anniversary was in 2002. So that means we have been in existence for 93 wonderful years. Um, and because our history and our tradition are so incredibly important to the instruments we make and who we are at Powell and our brand, I want to rewind just a little bit more. Uh, Powell Flutes was started in 1927 by our namesake, Vern Powell. And one of my favorite little bits of trivia is what the cue in our iconic there it is. <laughs> Triangle logo stands for. Um, if you want, leave your guesses in the comments. I'll swoop back in at the end and we can uh, find the correct answer. Who knows if we'll get it? Uh, you might be surprised. So again, what does the Q in Vern Q Powell stand for? Um, so that was, you know, 1927. Before that, Vern was a jewelry maker and a flutist in his local army band. And one day decided to try his hand at making his own flute. <laughs> I think maybe right now we can all relate to this as we are quarantining and staying at home. <laughs> and so Vern's first instrument would really become famous throughout the industry. It would become known as the spoon flute because you guessed it, he made it from six silver spoons as well as coins and watch casings and extra jewelry parts. So this spoon flute really became famous. It's something we love to talk about when you know discussing our history and the beginnings of Powell flutes. And it really set him down the path be to becoming a master flute maker. The flute played really well for being made from melted down spoons. Um, he worked at another flute company in the area and then eventually decided in 1927 to make start off, go on his own, start his own company, 
and make flutes in Boston in the revered French style, um, namely the Louis Lop flutes that were so well loved at the time and still are. Uh, so Powell flutes would soon become really the gold standard of the industry, pun intended, sought out by the best flutists in the country, all of the top flutists and orchestras and soloists, uh, you know, playing them all, you know, professionally all the time. And at one point with a wait list of seven years long. So I'm happy to report now that it is much less. You uh, certainly do not have to wait seven years. Now it's down to about three months. So you're in good shape. <laughs> and so it's really that history, uh, that Powell Flutes history, that makes our scenario line stand out as we first began to develop a more intermediate line of flutes that would serve as a step up uh, we had those standards of our professional flutes in mind our goal was to get as close as possible to the color palette ease range of our handmade flutes in in an instrument that would be you know more friendly to the budget and maybe more appropriate for those young Give a little shout out, thanks to everybody who has joined since we started. Hi, Nick. Hi, Lynn, of our wonderful artists. Thanks, Don. Hi, Sergio. Hi, Jay. Thank you all so much. Let's see. Jake has a question. He plays on a Sonari 705. Hooray. You love it. You don't think it will carry you through music school? Thoughts on the RMI 9K? That is a great question. Um, Jake, if you don't mind, I'm gonna save that. Um, we'll talk about the RMI 9K maybe like when we're closer to the 905. If you don't mind hanging with me for a bit, I promise that is an awesome question, but in short, the RMI 9K is a great college and beyond flute. So, all right, but I'll explain a little bit more why later. You love your Powell. Thank you so much. All right. So just kind of diving back into a little bit more about our Powell flutes and our most, you know, really importantly, our Powell sound. Um, it's something that we're known for. It's very iconic. You know, it's not just about the feel of the mechanism or the durability of the instrument, but you want something that has uh, sweetness and depth and range and the Powell sound has that and that you know projection to cut through all kinds of textures and we know that a significant part of that comes from the head joint um, oftentimes you know we'll try to speculate how much of a flute's character comes from just the head joint you know it's really uh, not even half of the flute you know maybe the top third top quarter but we say that at least half of the sound is is really coming from that head joint um, and that's why across the board all of our sonari flutes come standard with a hand cut sterling silver head joint and this head joint is called the signature two um, it's cut by the same flute makers who work on our handmade custom head joints for the professional level flutes. Um, hello to our Powell flute makers who might be tuning in today. I miss you guys. And so that really brings us to these individual models. But before we discuss um, the, the small details, I do just want to say that there are going to be some of the features on our flute today that you'll be able to see through the video, maybe not as clearly as if it was in person, but you might still be able to see it. Um, and some things that are really only obvious when you feel that flute in your hands. And then also some that really only are a difference when you're hearing it, especially in person or in, you know, a great recording. Um, so I'll do my best today to show you those differences, but if you're interested in trying any of them, if something sparks your interest for you or a student or, um, you know, your son or daughter or a friend, definitely, you know, reach out to your nearest dealer so that you can give them a try. I know some of them have been able to stay open due to, you know, really strict cleaning procedures. Some are finally starting to reopen. Um, so we love to support our dealers, reach out to them, and, um, you know, we can make sure we uh, give you that chance to try out a Powell flute. Just want to... Hi, Damien at Dylan Music, one of our dealers. 
Brin. Let's see, Teo says, do you think I could handle, handle international competitions on a Sonari 905? I love the Sonari 905. And I think that it is a really durable flute that has that great professional sound quality to it. So I think in short, yes, you know, it might not be your forever flute, um, but it can certainly get you through the door. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to our 905. Jeff, speaking of, says he has the 19th Sonari 905 ever made. I remember, Jeff, you have one more bite. All right, so we're going to start at the beginning of our Sonari family today, the Sonari 501. Um, and this is a really great instrument um, as a first step up for those younger players or even an introductory first flute, you know, if you have a student or a son or daughter who's, you know, more responsible and, and, and you know, you can uh, trust with giving them a really nice flute like this. Um, and then also our adult amateurs, you know, maybe starting out, don't want to invest too heavily um, financially in something yet. It just really has a lot of potential. Uh, the Sonari 501 has silver plated body and mechanism. So the tubing mechanism is all silver plated. Again, we have that sterling silver hand cut head joint, the signature tube style. And um, as you'll see from the beginning, our scenarios come open whole. So, you know, as the step up flute, this is going to give those students really something to grow into. Um, open holes are nice because it really encourages good hand position, um, better intonation, oftentimes a little bit more flexibility, um, and just really allows the sound to open up. Um, and, you know, if it is, you know, a student's first open hole flute, they all do come with plugs, so it's something that you can slowly make that transition into. The tubing, the silver plated tubing, is all 16 thousandths or 0.016, and that's what we refer to as a standard wall. That is the most common tubing thickness for flutes across the board made of silver. You will see some uh, more in the, the custom level that are thinner or thicker, 14 or 18 thousandths. But our Sonari line comes with the standard 16 thousandths. And on the back side of the flute, we have our standard drawn tone holes. Um, again, this is pretty much across the board. Any advanced pre-professional flute will have drawn tone holes. And that just means that the material here is extruded from the tubing instead of being added or soldered on. It makes the flute a little bit lighter and is definitely more cost effective as well, which is something we want to keep in mind with this line of flutes. So you'll see on the Sonari uh, 501, I'm going to show you the foot joint here. Sorry for any sunlight glare. Um, that the key cups here have Y arms as, to, as opposed to pointed arms, which you're going to see on other models. Um, these Y arms here um, do not require any extra soldering or separate parts. So this really allows the flute to come in at a friendlier price point. Um, our machines are able to, you know, cut these out as one piece and then the flute is assembled together. So it's nice and easy. And moving on a little bit, we really like the Y arms, nice and stable. Um, something that's not going to be so obvious to the eye are the springs. Um, and when we talk about the springs on a flute, you know, I think a lot of people is the first thing that comes to your mind is like a coiled mattress spring. But here we are actually talking about a straight piece of metal that controls the tension of the key. Um, this is really what is controlling, you know, the rebound when you press it down and it bounces back up. Um, and then also how it feels underneath your fingers, how hard or light you have to press. And the Sonari 501 uses what we call Elgeloy springs. These are, it's a metal alloy. Um, very durable, durable um, corrosion resistant, rust resistant, um, and really just nice and strong and long lasting so that, you know, for the, the younger players who might uh, not always be the most gentle with their flutes, the Elgeloy can really stand up to that. So, let's see. 
hop in and say hello. thank you to everyone who is sending their comments and their questions. Um, Marianne, thank you so much. You have a signature and a Sonari Alto. Sonari Thanks so much. Let's see, Marie, you play on a 705. Awesome. I'm going to come back to your question. Say two. I think Eric, you also have a 705. All right. So we're going to come back to the 501 just for a little bit longer. Um, so again, we have those Eldeloy springs. Um, and then on the other side of the flute, our pads. And definitely hard to see in a little webcast like this. Um, but our 501 through the 705 all use traditional felt pads. These are great for providing a nice even seal. And an important trait is that they're very friendly to technicians. Um, hopefully our dealers who are watching might agree. Um, they, when you know needing adjustment, if there's a little bit of a leak, are not as a time, um, do not take as much time as Strobinger pads might and are a little bit easier to work with. So that is uh, one of the perks of using the felt pads on our Sonari 501 through 705. And then another kind of keeping um, the durability of the instrument and the wear and tear in mind is our pinned mechanism on our Sonari flutes. It's a traditional style and it does have adjustment screws which allow for really quick adjustments should a leak occur. You know, so it's not going to necessarily involve taking the entire flute apart, being without it for a week. Hopefully it'll just be a quicker fix that way for any of those leaks that naturally occur um, on every flute in everybody's hands. All right. And I want to talk a little bit about options. And this is something that applies not just to our 501, but for all of our Sonari flutes. Uh, you'll see the flute I have here today does have inline G. Um, you get to choose inline or offset, which I will show you right here with our 505. You can see how this one is a little bit further out. Um, younger players often find the offset G a little bit more ergonomic. You don't have to reach nearly as far, especially with that ring finger. Um, a little bit more natural wrist position, uh, less tension, um, especially, you know, as you're putting in more time practicing, hopefully as they grow to love the flute more. Um, but, you know, some players, they start off on inline, that's just the flute they know, and that is what's comfortable. So it's very subjective, it's a very personal decision. Another choice that you have to make when considering your Sonari flute, again, whether it's a 501, 601, 705, is the foot joint. Uh, the 501 I have here with me today is a C foot. And if maybe you're a parent watching, we know that it's a C foot because it just has the two tone holes here. And instead of going down to three tone holes. So that's the way you can tell that apart. The C foot joint is, of course, a little bit lighter. You have a significant, significantly less, you know, um, flute added on. Um, so, you know, for younger students especially, the low B is not totally necessary. They're not often going to be going down that low, really not even to low C all that much in the first few years, first five years even. Um, but, you know, in high school and beyond for that solo repertoire, it is good to have the low B as an option. Um, it does help, you know, balance the weight a little bit. And, you know, it's really good to just be able to have that full range of the flute that we do expect later on. So, you know, it's a very personal decision, again, as a first step up, you know, C, C foot is not a bad decision. But that, after that point, I think it's always good to just try and do the low B foot. And then um, another option, the last one I'm going to touch on before we go to our six, uh, 505, pardon me, is the split E. So um, I know we had asked about before, one of our dear friends asked about the combination of split E and C-sharp trill. I will discuss that in a minute, but 
Um, another thing to note kind of similar is that split A is available on all Powell flutes, but only for offset G. Um, and it's just really the way that our mechanism is built, um, the series of bridges that you need to make that low E or the split E fit into place. Um, and oftentimes players ask, you know, why do we even need the split E? What does it do? Is it worth, um, you know, having that extra weight? Fortunately for Powell Scenaries, it does not add any extra cost. So that's a really nice feature. And what the split E will do is just make that high E way above the staff a little bit quicker response, a little bit easier to play. It does bring down the pitch a little bit. Uh, but considering that all of our scenarios have the modern Powell scale, I think it's also very easy to learn to not have it. You know, it, uh, it does bring down the pitch, but, you know, using lips, air, all that good stuff, all my flute friends will know that, you know, it's not certainly required. Um, it can make life easier, especially for, for articulation up there in that third octave for high E and A. But it's certainly something that you can learn to live without too. So again, very subject subjective choices. So with that, I do want to move on to our 505. I'm going to switch flutes here and then also just take a look, see if we have some questions maybe right now. That hello, Matt and Jeff. Great, nice to see you. Ah, Bruce is guessing that Q equals aesthetic value. Is being interesting? Hello, Cindy. Nice to see you, Charlie. All right. So let's jump back to our um, working our way through our scenario lineup. Next up is the 505. And this really has a lot of the same specs as our 501, except for one thing, and that is the pointed French pointed arms. So again, I think it's easiest to see on the foot joint. I'm going to turn it this way for you. So you can see how it's a little bit more of an elegant look. The pointed arms that stretch across the tone holes, the key cups rather. And, you know, oftentimes players will ask me, is this just for looks? Does it just make the flute look better? You know, is it really worth it just to have, you know, that more elegant appearance? And the, the short answer is that yes, pointed arms do have a purpose. It's not just looks. Um, they create a better seal than the Y arms. So the arm here is soldered onto the key cup. So this way, it is really connecting across the entire key cup, distributing that weight more evenly and providing a more true connection to the seals running the length of the flute. Um, because you have that more um, even weight distribution, there's going to be a better seal. You're not going to have heavier weight on the back and more weight on the front. So it is a really nice feature to, to keep in mind, you know, definitely worth um, the, the jump up from the 501 to the 505, you know, not required by any means, but it does have some really nice perks. Um, it still makes for a really great step up or first flute or, or second flute. So it's something um, I think as you're testing flutes to keep in mind. So with that, because like I said, the 501 and the 505 are very similar. You just have that uh, pointed arm difference. That's going to bring us to our 601. Um, this is a pretty significant difference. And um, I will say right now that unfortunately, our I was not able to get a 601 because of coronavirus. So I'm going to use our 501, which looks very similar. Um, and the reason it looks very similar is because the 601 has the, there we go, uh, Y arms. But the biggest difference when jumping from the 500 series to our 600 series is that your tubing is all sterling silver. So instead of the silver plated that you had um, on the 500 series, now you're really going to get that warmth that resonance, that uh, purity of tone from a sterling silver tubing. It really adds a lot to the sound and, you know, allows players to, you know, really have that full palette of tone colors a little bit more. 
And besides the tubing, just like our 501 um, and 505, the 601 here has your silver plated mechanism, kelp pads, um, pinned mech with adjusting screws, same choices with B foot versus C foot, offset versus inline G. And so we had discussed a little bit again about the split E um, and its availability. It is unfortunately only an option on our offset flutes. So as you know, we discussed ergonomics and the feel of offset versus inline G. If having a split E is something on your wish list as a flutist, um, it's a good idea for, you know, if you're doing the Sonari line to think more about that offset G. Um, because then it will allow you to get the split E just because of the way that the flute is built. Okay, so let's see. Any other Hello, Olivia. Hi, New York. I miss you guys. Seeing you out on the road. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. Hi, Luke. For those of you who are not familiar with our wonderful friend, Luke Pinella, who is down at the New York showroom doing our repairs there. All right, so if you have no questions about our 601, so again, that's our introduction into the sterling silver tubing um, with the silver plated mechanism. That's gonna bring us right along to our Sonari 705. So this is really where we kind of get into that pre-professional lineup, a more advanced flute. Um, this flute is gonna feel pretty different in your hands. And the main reason for that is because the 705 introduces to us the 10 karat white gold springs. If you remember, we talked about the Elgiloy springs, which are really durable, um, really, you know, stay up to and and you know maybe a little bit rougher handling um, the 10 karat white gold springs are going to give that you know quicker response feel you're going to get really lovely tension from them um, you know from just kind of like a nicer um, nicer alloy that we're working with okay and so you'll all no also notice um, maybe you're noticing a trend here we had our 501 and our 601 which had y arms keeping that one in mind. And we have our 505 and our 705 here, which have the, again, pointed arms, okay? So, you know, as you're looking maybe through a list of Powell Sonari flutes, it's a, just a little key to keep in mind that ending in the one is your Y arms, ending in the one is your French arms. Nice little code breaker for you. So moving along just to some other features around our 7 um, this is also where you get the chance to have a C-sharp trill. Um, so our flute today, my flute that I'm showing you today, does not have one, but it would basically look, uh, if you're not familiar, like another B-flat shape key, but just to the left of it, okay? So like a second one here. And then you would have another tone hole on the back side between your trill keys, trill tone holes, and your B-flat thumb. Um, and the C-sharp trill, you know, if this is a new concept for you, if you're a parent um, thinking about a scenario for your child or for your, um, you know, someone in your family, the C-sharp trill is uh, definitely one of the, the impressive pieces of technology that has come about. Um, Vern Q. Powell, actually, um, his came about pretty early in the early 30s, 1930s. And uh, we've been using it ever since. So while most flutists think that, oh, it's just, I don't have to do this to go from E to C sharp anymore. The real gem of C sharp trill, and I'm sure my flutists watching will agree, is that trill from high G to high A. Um, instead of having to use a harmonic, now you get to use your fancy C sharp trill and first trill key. And if you're not a flute player and this is all just kind of, whoa, too heavy on the flute, know that there is more behind the C-sharp trill than just its name. And that I think most flutists would agree that it's it's really worth that upgrade. Um, it's, a, it's a very handy little key. And so to answer the question on why um, we don't do the split E in combination with the C 
sharp trill on inline flutes. Again, it's just the way that the flute is built. Um, you know, we find that it's with the offset G, you have more room on the flute to put that extra mechanism. Otherwise, it just gets a little bit uh, crunch. If you're thinking you want to do both on an inline, um, you can certainly, you know, upgrade our um, signature conservatory custom line. That's an option there because they are a little bit more hand built. The pieces um, can, can be fit together on more of a custom basis. Okay. Question right now. Hello. Um, if you have any questions, pop your group or you'd be happy to answer them. Hi, Ryan. Yes, Flute Center. See, my friends, there. A C sharp trill is definitely a must have. The thing to keep in mind is that as these are often step up flutes and maybe not necessarily a forever flute for some. They definitely are, but you know, some of us it becomes more just one uh, before a professional level. Flutes that are offset, and um, if the C sharp trill is an option, like the 705, have a C sharp trill, the resale value is really quite good that way. So, you know, if you're a parent thinking about investing in a flute, um, again, it's, it's something to keep in mind that if your child does not have that preference between um, inline G and offset G, offset is gonna have a little bit more value over time, um, at least in our North American market, our American market, as well as if C sharp trill is an option, um, having that will help retain the value as well. So it's something to keep in mind, maybe not, not something we necessarily consider when you know, you're really thinking about that flute purchase. Of course, feel and purpose and sound is most important, but sometimes you need those little factors in between to help you decide from one flute model to the other. Okay. And as says, let's not forget about playing high A flat piano. Very point, very good. I agree. All right. Did with C sharp trill and the G donut, always a good option. Our G disc, which um, comes on uh, signature flutes, is uh, just a little removable disc that pretty much does the same thing as Slee and uh, is really nice and convenient. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, thank you. We have any questions right now? I don't think so. We're in good shape. All right, so before we move on to the next flute in our lineup, I do want to talk about some head joint options for our Sonari line. Um, so while the cut is going to be the same across the board, our signature two head joint, um, and you'll see the three flutes that I've had so far are all entirely sterling silver. We do have that option for a 9K RMI lip plate, as well as an entire 9K Aramite head joint. Um, and so this model here, you can see has the 9K Aramite lip and hopefully our you know, nice lighting, you can see it a little bit. Um, and this is what we would call um, the K model when it has the 9K Aramite lip or a KT, which is entirely 9K Aramite. Um, I'll explain a little bit about what R might is and why you might want to do that as we dive into this flute here, which was our lovely Sonari 905. Um, so this flute, as I mentioned earlier, is our newest flute that we just um, brought to the market last year in 2019 and really fills that hole for a flute that is pre-professional, you know, can get a flutist through college, you know, maybe beyond, feels like a professional flute, has that big sound capability, um, but, you know, is not going to totally uh, wreck your savings, right? So our 905 takes us from immediate to pre-professional. And one thing that you'll see right off the bat is the extra bling, so to speak. So as I mentioned, 9K Armite lip plate, and then the 905 also comes standard with a beautiful eye-catching 9K Armite barrel and crown, which I think might be a little trickier to see. And uh, 
Aramite is Powell's patented version um, of a fusion of gold and silver together. It's not gold plated, but it is metallurgically bonded to become one piece of metal. Um, kind of an interesting fact is that our gold layer in Aramite is about 35 times thicker than just gold plating. It's not going to rub off. It's not going to come apart. It's not going to wear down over time. And what the Aramite does is, you know, allows the flute to really, you know, still be polished just like a silver flute. Um, but, you know, you get those gold sound qualities, the feel of gold without that, you know, the, the bigger price tag. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, as uh, sales, direct sales specialist for Powell, I often I'm, I'm working with customers and they will ask, OK, is an Aramite barrel or an Aramite lip plate really going to make a difference or is it just for looks? You know, is it just so that it looks fancy? I have a gold barrel on my flute. I have a gold lip um, and they absolutely do make a difference. And the reason for that is because gold is denser. You know, the, the alloy of it, it's denser than silver. It has more weight to it as well. So flutes with these elements of gold in them have the warmer, slightly darker sound. And because gold adds weight to the instrument, um, for many players, this is going to improve their resonance. They have more to push against, so to speak. You know, oftentimes if a player is maybe cracking some notes and they're going to try a different head joint, doing just a gold arm might lip or a gold lip, that will give them something more to push against. So, yes, simply upgrading the barrel, the lip, the crown. It's, it's not just for show, not just for fun, but really can help a flutist find, you know, a bigger sound, a warmer sound, and, and really give them that nice range that they might be looking for. Um, and another important element um, when we look at the 905 is the fact that this instrument is hand finished at our workshop in Maine and Massachusetts. Um, and so what that means, if you've ever been on a tour to our uh, workshop, we would love to have you. We invite visitors all the time. So, you know, when we can all travel again, if you find yourself in Boston, come on and visit us. We're just outside the city there. Um, but our finishing department is where the flute is going to get padded, um, as well as a few other uh, steps. So these uh, finishers are the same people who are making our handmade custom professional flutes. And they are also finishing the 905s. So there's really a level of expertise and high standard there that um, brings this instrument to the next level. And as I mentioned, our finishers, if you're watching today, I hope you guys are doing well. We miss all being together. Um, so I mentioned, you know, this is when the flute, the finishing stage, when the flute is padded. And our Sonari 905 also has an elevated type of pad to it, the Straubinger Phoenix pads. You'll remember that the um, previous models had the traditional felt. Um, we love the Straubinger Phoenix because it really allows the player to have a bigger sound. Um, it's a bit more resonant, you know, a little bit darker, great projection, um, and it makes a big difference right there. And so as the flute is getting finished, our springs are getting installed. We talked about the 10 karat white gold springs on the 705, and that's also what we have on our 905. And then our corks and felts are put in so that you have that perfect feel, perfect weight and balance to the instrument. So this hand finishing is really a significant part of the process and, and gives the 905 a very different feel, a very professional feel underneath your fingers. You know, as I mentioned, some of these differences you'll really only know until you have the flute in your hands, and this is one of them. So as part of that professional um, finishing process from our, our uh, 
custom flute makers, there's also a very rigorous testing process. The flute is going to go back and forth several times, you know, play, uh, peer tested by different finishes in the department. Notes are made. We really make sure that all the, the pads are sealing perfectly, those Stravenger pads. There's the right tension under each key. It just feels really good to play and it has the sound, that Powell sound that we're looking for. So the 905, you know, really that next level, um, I'm, I'm going to go back to here and we have one of our early asked about five picking yuzu competitions. I think the 705 is a great option. Um, you know, definitely if that's the flute you're comfortable on and, and is the right fit you right now, you can have as much success as you as you put into it for sure. Um, you know, uh, some of uh, my students have recently upgraded to the 905 as well because they wanted that professional feel. It's a flute that, you know, wherever their flute careers take them, um, they get them through college, through grad school, you know, maybe into some of those early auditions. Um, I, you know, I love sharing stories. If you've met me out on the road, you know that I love uh, meeting all the flutists and was working with a customer last year at NFL. And he had one professional job on a Sonari 905 or a 705, sorry. Um, and so it is very much possible um, that you can have all kinds of success with the Sonari level of instruments. Um, and that's what's really great about it is that they are laying that great foundation for sound and feel and mechanics that you know you might be looking for in your professional flute playing as well. So hopefully that answers to go back and Remember my colleague. All right. See, Marcia is very definitely. Tiff, you ordered a six one with the rose gold. Congratulations! That's so exciting to hear. Very good. So that about um, wraps it up for our nine oh five. Unless there's any questions, I'm not seeing any. Um, Let's see, pricing, I would uh, suggest reaching out to your nearest dealer to get that information. Um, so again, a lot of our dealers are still operating right now, you know, maybe not so much in person, but doing like a contactless um, trials or, you know, shipping and whatnot. So definitely reach out to them. We love supporting, you know, all of our businesses that help support Powell. So you'll be able to find that answer, Teo. And if you need help um, finding a dealer, you can always go to powellflutes.com. We do have a dealer locator um, on our website, so that will help. Or you can reach out via message, and we'll we'll find the one that's closest to you. All right. But, uh, Brianna, one of our flute makers, so glad you. So with that, you might have noticed that I, um, if you are familiar with our line, skipped a a, a numerical number our PS850. And the reason I skipped it, if you aren't aware, is because this is our POW Sonari Piccolo. So I thought it made sense to do our flutes first and then circle back to our Piccolo. Um, and we just absolutely love this, this line. Um, if you are needing a Piccolo that, um, you know, for the indoor concert stage, but also can be outdoors and sound just as good, this is the instrument that you want in your hands. Um, the reason for that, yes, it looks like wood, but this is actually a resin infused wood. And what that's gonna do is prevent any cracking from occurring. It will allow the instrument to brave the elements um, without any awful, awful side effects that we know, you know, we have to be very careful with our grenadilla instruments, make sure it doesn't get too cold, too hot, you know, extreme temperature fluctuations, but the, um, Sonari PS850 is going to allow you to just kind of combat right through those, not have to worry about any um, adverse side effects. So our resin infused wood is paired with a silver plated mechanism. Um, so just really nice and durable, really good sound, friendly price point, which is what we love. Um, this instrument. You know, really great for schools, um, high schools, colleges, marching band programs that, you know, don't want to have to buy the indoor instrument and the outdoor instrument. 
So we really love it for that reason. Um, the mechanism, aside from being nickel silver, we also have those 10K white gold springs, just like our uh, 705 and 905. And then the head joint itself is hand cut. So it really has that elevated flexibility and tone color. Um, you know, there are some really great silver piccolos out there, but I think oftentimes the first reaction that many have is that it can sound very bright and a little bit shrill. So by having a hand cut resin infused wood head joint, it's going to have a ton of warmth to the sound and just a lot of capability to blend, whether it's into a wind ensemble or a marching band or an orchestra, symphony orchestra you have that full palette of colors with the resin infused wood. Um, again, without having to worry about cracking. So it's very durable. Um, so the signature, the, or the, sorry, Sonari 850 head joint that I have on here today is the classic cut. It does come in a wave cut, um, which you would be able to see. It's kind of just like a little angled front wall to it. And the wave is really going to help with the response of the instrument. It's going to be a quicker response um, and a little bit brighter sound. So, you know, a little bit darker, you know, maybe a little bit more resistant. Um, and it just depends on the needs and the feel of the player, what they like better, if it's the brightness of the wave, that quickness, or the darkness of the classic cut. But both are really great options. And if you have the chance to try out both, I definitely recommend it. So I'm just going to pop back and see if we have any questions that, that I can get. So back, I gave that little trivia question at the beginning of our webcast today. What does the, there it is, Q in Vern Q Powell flutes stand for? And the answer is nothing. Um, so Vern just really liked the way that it looked in the triangle logo design. He thought it kind of jazzed it up a bit and decided to incorporate it into the name of the company, into our brand, Vern Q. Powell Flutes. So there's your, your flute party trivia when we can all get together again and we can nerd out on flutes together. You can ask your friends what they think the Q stands for in Vern Q. Powell. Let's see here. Help with Marcel. Very cute. I'm in today just because of coronavirus and all good stuff and sound brightness communicating through our video here. I apologize for that, but I'll keep that in mind. We'll, when we have our uh, session on May 26, I think Christina is going to be you know, playing a little bit for us today. So or on that day. So that will be something that we can look forward to. And let's see, no other questions here. So again, May 26th, hopefully we will see you then. Um, another Powell Artist live stream with um, Christina James. And then again, since today's live stream is part of our Buffet Crampon Together at Home series, hashtag Together at Home. I'll remind you that this Thursday, there is another webcast coming up with our low brass specialist from Buffet Crampon, Declan Lynch. He'll be joined by Besson euphonium artist, Stephen Mead. So that will be a great forum that you don't um, Can't wait to hear what Stephen has to say. I think he'll have, have a lot to share. And I'm just gonna go back and revisit some of your questions because I'm realizing I did miss a couple. Jeff, did they ever consider making the riser RMI as well? That might have been interesting. I agree, very interesting. Um, we haven't done any RMI risers. So on the um, Powell RMI flutes, whether it is the uh, 9K RMI conservatory or the 14K handmade, those are all going to have 14, um, if you if you do a gold riser, a 14 karat riser. Um, the 9K Armite Conservatory comes with a silver riser just because, you know, we find that for such a small component, it has a huge sound. Um, but with the soldering properties and making sure that the connection from um, tubing 
to lip plate is strong enough um, going with either just sterling silver or 14k or another gold was the way to go so that's a great question we have not done an our might riser it's not in, in in modern times here but that's a great question you can always upgrade the riser to 14 14k and that will get some nice as well Jamie, not sure the gold giving out I think uh, if we have any questions, I'm going to scroll. Let's see. You're welcome, Linda, for the informative session. Hopefully, you learned a little bit about our Sonari flutes. Again, if you have any questions um, and have the chance to answer them, um, I haven't had the chance to answer them today. You can always message me, email me, um, visit our website. We have a lot of great information there. Um, Karina is asking, can we do another one with custom flutes? We absolutely, absolutely will touch on our custom flutes um, at a later date, probably a little bit on the 26th. And then depending on the needs with everything happening with coronavirus, um, if we do a third session, we'll certainly work them in as well. So, but I will keep that in mind as we plan a little bit more future webcasts. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, thank you for being such a wonderful maker. That was a good way, good way to break up your day. I know I had fun nerding out about Sonari flutes with you and uh, answering questions and feeling a little bit more connected as we go through this time together. Um, it makes a big difference. So again, don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions. You message the Powell Flutes Facebook page. Um, you can find um, uh, on our Facebook page, it's linked to my profile, so you can always send me a message directly or you can um, shoot us an email through our website um, as well. You can find our information all online. So please don't hesitate to reach out. It was great chatting with you all today. I'm going to say a little goodbye. And uh, fortunately, we did not have any cat cameos. I'm sorry it was a disappointment to anybody, but I was pretty relieved. So thanks so much for joining me, everyone. And have a great rest of your day. Take care.